Happy holidays, everyone. Today I am going to be making the highly requested sorrel fruit cake. This is just a recipe that I put together, so welcome and I hope you guys enjoy. So, my mom brought these sorrel from Florida. They are like two different brands, and I'm going to be using both. I'm going to use one pack of one and then I use like a half pack of the other because I don't know which one is. You know stronger I, th I think that this one that i'm opening now was the stronger red and but these are dried sorrel so they're very potent so i'm gonna get a strong mixture from this as opposed to using the fresh one from the ground and one thing about this too if you brew this overnight the next day you're gonna have like a more of a deep um not deep red more like of a purplish color yeah it's very kind of give you like a purple color if you have this sitting overnight so i don't want my cake to look purple so i'm gonna use this today so i'm gonna brew it and let it sit for a couple hours and then i'm gonna use it but first we have to rinse it properly to get rid of all the impurities and stuff like that so i'm just gonna rinse it and then i'm gonna add it to my boiling water just the same method that i, that I would make my sorrel drink however I'm not going to let this have a lot of ginger or a lot of cinnamon because I don't want that to overpower my cake. Alright, so I'm just going to add a few thin slices of ginger, some orange peel and a cinnamon stick to my boiling water. And then I'm going to add my sorrel, let it come to a vigorous boil for about 5 minutes and then turn it off, cover it down and allow it to brew. So to reduce the tangy taste that you get from the sorrel, I'm going to add about three quarter cups of sugar to this. Not too much because we're going to have some sugar in the cake. So um, we're just going to add about three quarter cups of sugar and allow that to simmer down, cover it and allow it to brew. All right. So uh, several persons have asked me to make sorrel cake. I have made a sorrel cake before. I know that other Caribbean countries um, have always been making sorrel cake. So what I'm going to do is just create a recipe as what I have perceived to be a good recipe for a sorrel cake. I know I've seen several persons make this and they like puree the sorrel, but that's not, not what I'm going to do today. I'm going to use like two cups of my sorrel mixture and I'm going to add my fruits. Now when it comes on to fruits, I can't tell you how much to add. One tip that I got from my Aunt Pauline is that when you're making fruit cake, if you want a heavier cake, you add lots of fruits. If you don't want a heavy cake, you add less fruits. Alright, so go ahead and do you whatever. If you want a light cake, don't put too much fruits in there. But today I am making a half pound mixture. So I'm going to be adding half pound of butter, which is equivalent to two stick of butter and make sure that your butter have been sitting out overnight so that it's at room temperature that way it's easier for me to mix this until it's smooth so i'm adding three quarter cups of sugar to my mixture because i already have some sugar in my sorrel all right and then we're going to whip this together this is going to take a while because I need my sugar to be completely dissolved into the butter. So we're going to whip this completely until it is nice and fluffy. So after the first 10 minutes of whipping, you want to make sure that there is no sugar um, sticking anywhere. You want to scrape that down in the pan and you want to scrape the side of your mixing bowl to ensure that the butter is being mixed. Alright, so while that is whipping, I am going to add my flour and as I said before I'm doing a half pound mixture I'm not using a scale so half pound is equivalent to two cups and two tablespoons and you want to make sure that your measurement is precise because this is baking it's very intricate especially if you're not a culinary chef you want to make sure that your measurement is on point so use a knife if you have to to scrape to level off the flour to make sure that you have the correct mixture all right so I'm going to sift this to ensure that there is no lump and everything is smooth. And then I'm going to add my spices to my flour. For my spices, I'm going to be using one tablespoon of cinnamon powder. And then I'm going to add like a half teaspoon of mixed 
mixed spice, you know, a Jamaican mixed spice, or if you want to use all spice, it's the same thing. I'm going to add a tablespoon of baking powder, and I'm also going to add some grated nutmeg. All right, I'm not going to grate too much nutmeg, just about half teaspoon and a half teaspoon of salt. So now I'm just using a whisk to make sure that my spices are properly combined into the flour and then we're going to move over to the egg. Remember it's a half pound mixture so we're going to need half dozen eggs and I'm just emphasizing on this because I know persons are going to be asking these questions. I added some orange zest to add some flavor to the cake as well as cut the rawness from the egg. Now I'm adding half teaspoon of vanilla and half teaspoon of almond essence and you can add these to the fruit mixture but you can also add it to the egg mixture it doesn't matter when you add it all right so now we're going to check our mixture and as you can see our butter and our egg is our butter and our sugar is properly whipped and is nice and smooth and fluffy and there wasn't any sugar grains in there and now we're going to add our eggs little by little and allow it to mix when you add your eggs you're going to see that it's curdled a little that's fine when you add the flour the curdlings will disappear so just go ahead and combine your eggs little by little just to ensure that the eggs are mixed in properly for those who are watching from youtube Please remember that you can always click the description box to get the list of ingredients used in this video if you weren't writing down. So now that I'm done mixing out all my eggs into the butter and sugar mixture, I'm going to combine it to my fruits. And at this point, you don't want to over mix because we're going to be adding the flour. So you want to go around in circular moment and fold in the flour little by little. So you're going to go around in circle and then fold in. This is a visual tutorial for those who are baking for the first time. You can just look at what I'm doing and it will become easy to you. So you just pour the flour in, go around in circle and fold it in. That's it. Until all your flour mixture is combined. For those who are joining my Facebook page for the first time, I do have a fan subscription. Um, by the time this video is up, it should already be up and running. It's $4.99 and you can cancel at any time. And what this um, fan subscription do, it gives you special perks as any one of my videos that you're watching and you want the written recipe i'll write it and give it to you as well as if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one when you're baking your cake or doing any of my recipe um on a scheduled time and date we can do that so those are special perks or if you don't want any of those and you just want to be a supporter of my channel to keep my channel going you can go ahead and join and you can cancel at any time so now that we've gotten that out of the way as you can see our mixture is almost complete we're just mixing and folding and that's it and we don't we're not over mixing this as you can see we're going around and we're folding in and then we're done and i just want to make this clear for all my friends on my facebook page who are always messaging me to ask me a few questions it doesn't mean that not because you're not a part of my fan subscription it doesn't mean that i'm not gonna answer i will answer you so keep on sending me your messages and you know keep on showing me all the love that you guys have been showing me and the support that you're giving me by just watching my video all right so you're not being pressured to join any subscription is just a perk that facebook gives to us to help us um to grow our channel so yeah as you can see i just added some 
more wine you don't have to add any more wine because there's a lot of wine in my fruit mixture and most of your alcohol is gonna evaporate anyway now this um is what you want your cake mixture to look like this is a butter consistency that you need to get a nice moist moist very moist fruit cake all right so i had my oven preheating at 270 degrees usually when i'm baking a regular cake i put it at 350 but i need this cake to bake for a very long time to make sure that everything is cooked and it remains moist so don't put your oven too high because when there's too much heat circulating in the oven your cake dry out and another big thing that happened is it cracks you can also put your oven on 250 but I put mine on 270 and it worked for me. You can also go down to 250 or 180. Depending on the type of oven that you have, you can even go down to 180. If it even has to bake for three hours, that's fine. Fruit cake is supposed to be in your oven for a long time, baking slowly. So please don't rush it. Just be patient and you will have some perfect fruit cake. As I said before, this was my first time making sorrel cake. Well, the only difference is that you add the sorrel. So, once you know how to make fruit cake, then you'll be able to make a sorrel fruit cake. It all depending on how you want. If you want to puree your sorrel, as I said, I've seen people puree the sorrel. I just don't like the taste of the, um, as we Jamaican call it, trash. <laughs> but I don't like the texture of it after it's boiled. I just think that everything that i need from it is already extracted so i throw that part out all the fibers the fiber part i throw that out i don't use that part but it up, it's up to you whether you want to use it or not i'm not going to tell you not to puree your sorrel um go ahead and do whatever you see fit as i said before i like to create my own thing and that's what i did so after pouring everything in you want to make sure that you just knock it on the counter a little bit that is why i put that kitchen towel there first i level the top with my spatula to make sure that my cake is leveled and then i just knock it to get rid of the air bubbles so that they can just come up top all right so we just want to knock it just like that to get rid of the air bubbles and then you pop it in the oven because the oven is already preheated and you can start preheating your oven right um when your butter is finished mixing about that time you can go ahead and preheat the oven and make sure that it's nice and ready as you can see my cake is out <laughs> it's out and it was so moist i allow this to cool down normally we don't cut fruit cake until the next day because that when you get a nice cut from it but while it's hot i'm gonna go ahead sprinkle some more rum and wine on it and allow it to cool down before I cut into it. This was a very small one, so it never took a very long time to cook. After a few hours, I was able to cut it nicely and it was so, so good. I promise you guys, I promise you, not because this is my recipe, I'm not telling you any lie, this cake went out so fast, so, so fast in my house. So I promise you, follow this recipe from start to finish and you won't regret it you will have your family asking for more and more sorrel fruit cake every christmas all right so i'm gonna cut it so that you can see the texture and then we're gonna cut the big one so don't go away the video is not done we still have to look at the big one to see the texture of it and if it came out just the same as the little one I forgot to mention that I butter my cake pan. I use the room temperature butter to butter it and then I add a piece of parchment paper in the bottom. Yeah, so that my cake is safe and secure and I'm sure that the bottom is not going to burn. All right, so this is a sample cake, so we're just going to cut it and eat it. So now for the moment of truth, you can see how moist, look at how moist this cake is. It was very, very moist. All right, I'm just gonna give you a 360 and let you see for yourself. 
I wish you could taste this cake guys my husband came home I'm gonna insert a clip to show you of him going and going on this fruit cake yes he was he came in right on time when this cake was cool and cut the lighting it's nighttime now so the lighting is kind of off in the kitchen but that's my husband that's him <laughs> he was enjoying this fruit cake so the big one is out now and it's ready to be cooled down i'm gonna add some wine and rum on there as well and then we are going to allow it to cool down and cut into it as well So the big one is out now and um, I need to show you guys so that you can see for yourself that this cake is no joke. It's really really moist and nice and I would love for you guys to have this on your Christmas table or your Thanksgiving table. So that is why I went ahead and posted this video in November instead of December so that and you know some people start the baking early and you know you can always add rum to this to make sure that it stay nice and safe for christmas so so at this point i just want to say thanks to all my youtube friends to all my facebook friends thank you guys so much i don't like to call names you all know yourselves thank you for always watching and commenting i appreciate you guys and thanks to everyone who have been sharing my videos over there on facebook oh my god the love is so overwhelming i appreciate every single one of you and i want you guys to have a happy holiday enjoy yourself put yourself first but also show some love to your friends and your neighbors